Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Gnostics from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry by Albert G. Matthews. Gnostics. The general name of Gnostics has been employed to designate several sects that sprung up in the eastern parts of the Roman Empire about the time of the advent of Christianity. Although it is supposed that the principal doctrines had been taught centuries before in many of the cities of Asia Minor, the word Gnosticism is derived from the Greek gnosis, or knowledge, and was a term used in the earliest days of philosophy to signify the science of divine things, or, as matter says, superior or celestial knowledge. He thinks the word was first used by the Jewish philosophers of the famous school of Alexandria. The favorite opinion of scholars is that the sect of Gnostics arose among the philosophers who were converts of Paul and the other apostles, and who sought to mingle the notions of the Jewish-Egyptian school, the speculations of the Kabbalists, and the Grecian and Asiatic doctrines with the simpler teachings of the new religion, which they had embraced. They believed that the writings of the apostles enunciated only the articles of the vulgar faith, but that they were esoteric traditions which had been transmitted from generation to generation in mysteries, to which they gave the name of Gnosticism or Gnosis. King says that they drew the materials out of which they constructed their system from two religions, viz. the Zendavesta and its modifications in the Kabbalah, and the reformed Brahmical religion as taught by the Buddhist missionaries. Notwithstanding the large area of country over which this system of mystical philosophy extended, and the number of different sects that adopted it, the same fundamental doctrine was everywhere held by the chiefs of Gnosticism. This was that the visible creation was not the work of the supreme deity, but the Demiurgus, a simple emanation, and several degrees removed from the Godhead. To the latter, indeed, styled by them, the unknown father. They attributed the creation of the intellectual word, the aeons and angels. While they made the creation of the world of matter, the work of the Demiurgus, Gnosticism abounded in symbols and legends, in talismans and amulets, many of which were adopted into the popular superstition of the medieval ages. It is, too, interesting to the student of Masonic antiquities because of its remote connection with that order, some of whose symbols have been indirectly traced to a Gnostic origin. The Druzes of Mount Lebanon were supposed to be a sect of Gnostics, and the constant intercourse which was maintained during the Crusades between Europe and Syria produced an effect upon the Western nations through the influence of the pilgrims and warriors towards the Manichaeans, the most prominent offshoot of Gnosticism. The Templars exercised a tolerant spirit very inconsistent with the professed objects of their original foundation, which led to the charge that they were affected by the dogmas of Manichaeism. These strange ceremonies observed in the initiation into various secret societies that existed in the lower empire are said to have been molded by the Gnostic rites of the Mithric Cave. The architects and stonemasons of the Middle Ages borrowed many of the principles of ornamentation by which they decorated the ecclesiastical edifices which they constructed from the true symbols of the Gnostics. So too we find Gnostic symbols in the Hermetic philosophy and in the system of Rosicrucianism. And lastly, many of these symbols still used by Freemasonry such, for instance, as the triangle within a circle, the letter G, and the pinnacle of Solomon have been traced to a Gnostic source. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.